Hello and welcome to What Are You Saying? Hashtag Ways, where we talk about topics in the news as it affects us all. My name is Oluwa Damilola Ibitoye, and I am joined by my amazing co-anchors, Glory and Sanzi. Hi, Glory. How are you today? Hi, I'm fine. Um, well, it's been a stressful week. Yeah, I can um, see that. <laughs> <laughs> so I know, like, before we came on live, you know, we are just talking about how everything has been but one thing though i just recalled after saying that like i challenged myself yesterday i went on youtube live on my youtube page really? yeah so that's something which i'll definitely not push myself to want to do but recently just like you said i've been trying to also challenge myself to get out of my comfort zone but definitely this week has been really like i've been having late nights because of right. work so it's a little bit here and there, but I'm happy to be here today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> challenging yourself is actually the way to go, trust me. Yeah. I did it, and I think that I'm glad I actually did. And then again, talking about having stressful I'm just glad that we're having this conversation today about um, the gig um, economy, because 9 to 5 can be really, really <laughs> tasking and really, really stressful. You're out of the house early because you need to meet up your call time at work, and then yeah. when you close, you're faced with Lagos traffic again. So. And sometimes, is it really 9 to 5? Like sometimes, sometimes it's really nine to nine. <laughs> so six to so, nine or something. You know, the thing I is, mean, I was reading in the news that there is this man in California who is proposing a law that it's called a right to disconnect. Really? But that once your That'll work hours are over, let's say you work from nine to five, and even if the sky is falling, don't call don't me. Don't call I'm me. Don't feel it for you. Except, for in, in, uh, except during emergencies that mm -hmm. you have foreseen or you have told me you're okay. Yeah. Like it's in my contract and I'm aware of it. If not, don't call me. I am not available. I'm having my family time. I subscribe and life to is that. good. I really, really subscribe <laughs> to that. How are you, Sandy? I am. Whew, I was just listening to Gloria. I'm like, <sighs> Gloria. <laughs> I'm like, I'm stressed. But I feel like I, I can tell. <laughs> is it written all over my face? I'm not particularly, but I just okay. know. <laughs> so I've had a super long day, um, which ideally shouldn't have been like that. I don't know how my day just went off to 12 years. Right. I ended up here. Uh, so at, as at four, I hadn't even like, it, it's a long story, but and then my bank, I was going to get fuel because because I had so many deadlines, mm -hmm. I was I never I forgot to stop and get fuel. So I was coming here, and then I realized, oh my goodness, I'm coming to the island and I'm running on empty. And then, as you know, there is no fuel. The fuel yeah. is very scarce right mm -hmm. now, so I had to queue up. And then the bank transaction refused to go through. Yeah, I and saw it's a long, some banks have actually been having issues. It's a since long, it's a long wait. And then right. eventually, about an hour later, that was sorted out. And then coming up here, it's raining. And you know what Lagos is yeah. like when it's raining. So it's, it's just, it, the day didn't go how I planned it. Right, but well, thank God you're here. Yeah, I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm fine too. Um, I'm okay, I guess. I'm surviving. I'm thriving. You look Even good. In this, thank you. Thank you very much. Even in this, you know, economy that seems to be quite epileptic. I mean... I think I'm doing yeah. good. I, I think I'm doing good. So here's what we found as today's quote. Solopreneurs will rise because freelancers will become commodities to utilize. And this was said by Richie Norton. So yes, I think I agree with this quote actually because, mm -hmm. I mean, solopreneurs, you know, these are people that, um, you know, start off a business. They have an idea. They start off a business on their own. And, you know, so knowing the fact that they don't necessarily have to hire a lot of hands like in proper companies and organizations mm -hmm. that can get the job done you know they can just hire freelancers it could be like a two months contract be like a few weeks contract yeah. you know stuff like that so i think that i really really agree with this because really and truly freelancers will become communities to really really utilize Plus, i like that life yeah honestly i love i love this is the first time in my life that i've worked and it's not like i work in nine to five i mm -hmm. still do like contracts here and there but this is the first time in my life that i'm not doing a periodic contract such that yeah. after a while i can travel take a time off and come back and i really do miss the contracts life mm -hmm. <laughs> i really really do yeah. miss it i think because, that's the life um, i yeah. want to live it's called soft life it's so really i can i yeah, can i can yeah, just do, work for five six months and just enjoy yeah. my life with what i've been able to make uh, and so, you want to say something yeah really? yeah i feel like i feel like you sort of think you're going to enjoy it until you're there because I have people mm. that have I've interviewed before they they were freelancers yeah. and suddenly became boring 
they want to socialize yeah, they, they want, want to be in official structured yes. yeah i think there's something that actually comes with structure there's a there's a good thing that that comes with structure when you're in a place without structure you yeah. would you would really need and crave structure so i think i, I agree i agree with that school of thought well, there's some, okay well no no go ahead please. i was going to say that there's some freelancers that you have to show up in the office well, like, yeah. Bit, so I think it also really depends on week, yeah. Something. It also yeah. depends on the kind that you're doing. Uh -huh. But anyway, so imagine having power to choose when and where to work. That's the gig economy magic. Freelancers can pick up gigs that match their skills and schedule. It's super flexible, allowing folks to pursue their passions and handle family stuff. Today we want to discuss the topic, the gig economy, opportunities and challenges for freelancers with Elizabeth Musa. And when we open our phone line, we would love to hear what you have to say. But first, let's take a break and see what we found in the news. Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching Ways. Now picture a world illuminated by the light of conscience, where every thought and action aligns with peace, love and understanding. That day is today. On April 5th, International Day of Conscience is celebrated to commit to a culture of peace cultivated through love and conscience. It is a day that shines bright like a beacon, reminding us of our collective journey towards a harmonious world. I think there are a lot of people in this world without conscience, trust me. I mean, I think that every normal person should have conscience, but sometimes Absolutely. when you see the way people move, you just be like, do you really have the fear of God in you? I yeah. feel like a lot of people move without Kids the fear of you. <laughs> Kidnappers. <laughs> People who just rob people. There was this incident in Ogun State that, or is it Ogun State or Ondo State, where there was this luxury vehicle traveling. I don't know where it's going to. Yeah. And then they robbed the passengers and burnt the vehicle, the luxurious bus. Like, where is your conscience? No, conscience is something that I think that every normal, you don't even have to be a person of faith. When I say faith, not about your, your religion. Mm -hmm. As a normal human being, you should actually humanity. have... Con it's just humanity. Thank you. Right. You should actually have... Because that's what is going to guide you from doing what is wrong, from what is actually right. Because if you don't have conscience, you can just pick up the nearest knife and kill the next person close to you. But if mm -hmm. you really have the fear of God in you, you will not be doing all this. It's like so a restriction. <laughs> I, I am really, really happy that there's a day dedicated, right, to actually celebrate World Conscience Day. And, yeah. well, I hope that more people would have conscience from now on. And they will have the fear of God in them. <laughs> yes, please. We need more really and truly. considerate people. Honestly, I agree. Conscious conscience. <laughs> I, I, I agree with you. All right, so, Glory, what did you find for us in the news today? Um, what I found is about an um, increase in electricity tariff. Hmm. Uh, uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So it's so funny. Um, I was when I was on transit to work yesterday over the radio. I heard someone analyze the whole increase. But before going to that, let me just read what I found in the news. It says the minority caucus of the House of Representatives has called on the federal government to prevail on the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission to cancel the recent increments in electricity tariff across the country. The NERC recently approved a 300% tariff increment for band for band a consumers allowing power distribution companies to raise electricity prices for city dwellers from 68 naira per kilowatt to 225 naira in a in a statement issued on friday in abuja minority leader of the house kingsley chinda described the hike as inhuman and evil so yeah um i had to further dig into this to really um I, I had to go through the video and, you know, the minister of power. And so some of the reasons he gave is um, that, so just like fuel um, was being subsidized by the government, same with electricity is being subsidized and it's mm -hmm. not something that's sustainable. Yeah. So that's the reason why they had to like, um, so according to him, this is like 15% um, of, it's not like the whole, um, will I say, the whole, population of individuals consuming electricity so the tariff is just for like 15 percent that's why they categorize as category a consumers yeah, the so a yes the ban a consumers yeah. and according to him um the rest will still be having privileges of subsidized electricity by 70 percent i think he said the government covers about 70 percent but the question is like i i want to i i did not um let me say maybe i did not watch the video to the end to see who are the category of individuals in this um ban a 
consumers? Are they companies um, manufacturing? So I think we have people with lights between 20 hours to 22 yeah. hours per day. Mm -hmm. so yes, yeah, so they're about. However, still, there's still going to be an impact in the economy and yes. how prices of things are because people want to, if um, someone, I'll assume that people that are high consumers technically would probably be business or people that are using electricity for yeah. something business oriented. Like so business they want to transfer so. that cost mm -hmm. to um, the final so the end price, users. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So, yeah, so ahead. there was just a conversation of, is this really the right time? Like, you know, I, we understand that maybe the government has their reasons for mm -hmm. what they are doing this, but is this really the right time where everyone is complaining, things are really going crazy? Yeah. Is this really the right step? I just feel like the government at this point is like, let's just, let's just suffer now and see if it's <laughs> going to get better. But the question is, is it really going to get better? Because statistics have shown that things that... Um, that went up in Nigeria really did come down. Yeah. So what's the guarantee that is going to get better in the future? So that's... So I have an alternative view. Okay. Mm. Here it is. Now, this... Uh, I read a story as well. And the band A, they consume about... So far, we have about 12 million people out of over 200 that, that have, like, prepaid mm. meter. Yeah. Which is the other ones that they accuse of electricity theft because we have, like, produce meter. If you produce meter, you reduce electricity theft. It's that simple. But anyway, so out of that 12 million, about 2 million people are the ones within Band A. So these people, they are gulping, or major, they are gulping 40% of the electricity. Then the remaining 10%, uh, 10 million people are sharing 60%. So this is how me I see it. Too. Mm -hmm. Remember, if you go back to campus days, yeah. there are some people that have AC and fridge and everything in their house, and then there are others that have just hand fan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're probably and paying the same ne um, light bill. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I'm saying it like, if you are consuming more, you should pay more. And you have the privilege of of having like electricity for 20 hours that is a huge privilege in nigeria majority would have electricity for like three hours so the thing is that even those people that are in the band a that they say mm -hmm. they, they claim to have they claim that they have light for 20 hours yeah. plus most of them are coming out now to see you don't even have light up to that amount of time mm -hmm. right i think that even if there was going to be an i agree with your points right mm -hmm. if you are using more you should probably pay more i right. get it but then again isn't the hike in price so ridiculous? From 68 naira yeah, to 225. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's too ridiculous because now a lot of businesses are going to suffer. Let's even forget residential. Well, right? you know, some of, yeah, some of these people are government suffer. houses. Hmm. Well, we cannot really tell for sure. But obviously, if a business is affected, he, that business will, will want to transfer that cost. Yes, yeah. because right now we're complaining that, okay, the prices of goods are so expensive. And that's owing to the fact that fuel has not, the price of fuel has not come down. So it means that it, it, it goes on to logistics, you know, moving from point A to point B. Of course, mm. the seller is going to definitely add this to their prices. Do you get what I'm saying? So, I mean, now you're not added light to the entire station. Meanwhile, there was FX issue. Unfortunately, some sellers have even had to buy at very high rates when yeah. FX was up. So right now that FX is down, that's the only reason why they can't bring yeah, their prices we, we down. Now, we've not added this additional electric, I mean, um, electricity tariff to it. Uh, I, I mean, at this point... God, we are post wow, in Nigeria. <laughs> Sansi, what did you find for us in the news? So, there's a lot of things in the news today. Bob Risky is trending. Well, I just, I'm just, I don't have the energy to decide whether it's... You should have the energy. You brought it as our what in the news. So. <laughs> I don't have the energy to juggle between he, she. Because mm. I don't know which is which. So I, just, I just refer to he, she as he, she. <laughs> no way. <laughs> but anyway... um. Although some people are saying it's unfair that, you know, he, she is asked to pay 400 million naira mm. as bail. That's ridiculous. It's not fair. Yeah. It looks as though they plotted for him. True. But anyway, I'll leave that alone. So here is my, <laughs> here is my story. Osai Obie's success and aid to governor of Delta State says womanizing is now expensive and might be the reason why some men are yet to make it in life. In a post he shared on his Facebook page, I wish we can have that on screen. Okay, there it is. He said, womanizing is expensive. Kindly look at the breakdown. <laughs> so, please don't laugh. Oh Tea fair for coming, 10,000 naira. Hotel room, 30,000 naira. Hmm. Barbecued fish, see ya, 5,000 naira. <laughs> Drinks, 6,000 naira. Food, 8,000 naira. And yeah, 800 naira. <laughs> 
<laughs> Bottle water, a thousand oh naira. Drinks overnight, five thousand naira. Thanks for coming, fifty k. Total is one hundred and twenty three k. And I'm thinking, wait, uncle, who do you used to give tea fair ten thousand naira? Which tea fair is ten thousand naira? Where in this so where? Tinubu's like where are you going to next? <laughs> barbecued <laughs> fish here. When was the last time you went for barbecued fish here? How I, I don't understand. How much five thousand naira is like how many pieces? I think this list was compiled it's, some months, yeah, some yeah. years back. It is fact. so it can't cheap, be recent. It and can't it's be rather recent. unfortunate because the more even as he is saying this, the rate of humanizing is actually going up. So it's, it's like terrible. this is. So I, I think like um, it depends on the type of humanize, the humanizing and who you're humanizing with. True. So there are different categories <laughs> of humanizing. So from, then, you know, from like a rough analysis, there are about three. Uh -huh. You know, you have the, human, the, um, the sugar daddy. That's Wahala. probably the ones that the bank roller. So this one does not even <laughs> fall under that category. Like this is nothing <laughs> compared to... And there are people actually who humanize and don't even spend this much. It's crazy. Yeah. So it depends on... Yes. Depends it depends on... The so so there are some... Yeah, it depends on the class. There are some women that don't need all of this. They just need, like, wow. their engine being oiled. And wow. <laughs> Servicing so and all that. that <laughs> My question now is... Is there anything in this world that can stop? Because as it is, this Nigerian economy has hit the worst ever in, in her history. Mm. So, and men are still womanizing. Is there anything in this world that can stop a man from womanizing? Unfortunately, I don't think so. Until, <laughs> le until people learn to be disciplined. Oh, so someone said discipline doesn't, it does not just take discipline. I don't know, but I don't think there's anything that can... You know, I was um, I um, saw on Instagram the other day on a pastor's post where he peep, um, was trying to talk against um, mm -hmm. adultery and all of that. And someone said um, that you can't blame a man. Sometimes it's not really just about um, that a man wants to cheat or go out there. That's just maybe he's been pushed from the home and things like so people Such will definitely dash. find excuses if there's no money they will say they're humanizing you know, because there's no money if there's money it's because there's excess behavior. money mm. so there's always an excuse for bad behavior yes, there's so always an excuse for bad let's, it's not going to go away anytime soon <laughs> so okay. let's get used all right to it. all right <laughs> okay. i'll just go straight to what i found in the news so what i found in the news was something um sandy already touched anyway about uh bob risky so he was first arrested you know i think that was on wednesday night you mm -hmm. know and had a yes. six um, count charge. something like that, yeah. <laughs> so, and now, so they have dropped the charge for money laundry, but then he has pleaded guilty to Naira abuse. Oh. So, I, I think my own reservation is Bobriski might not be the most fantastic person, right? But then again, I don't think that Bobriski is the only one guilty of this. There's always a party happening every, every weekend yeah, or every day, somehow in Lagos, and people are always spraying money, probably even stepping on some Naira notes and whatnot. Mm -hmm. More so, the reference video of why they actually arrested Bob Risky. If you look closely at that entire event, he wasn't the only one who actually sprayed Spray. money. But then yeah. again, why is it being the scapegoats? So I think some people are saying that this is witch hunting because of yes, the, it is witch he's been hunting. trending in the news. Hishi has been <laughs> trending in the news. And that, that's how I refer to Hishi. <laughs> so Hishi has been trending in the news because of uh, winning Best Dressed Female. Yes. And I think this is just a way to maybe i won't call it witch hunting but it does look a lot it was like in the witch event hunting. where he was giving that award that's the yes, reference video where, was, you I was, where he, she yeah. was spraying the yeah the, i also the, saw a video the, of him singer. saying like um i think he just put himself in a position especially about all this money spraying he was yeah. making the video saying like the reason why he does not invite skip makers because they don't know how ah, to spray they don't money. have money to spray yeah, yes so, i remember so he's, and i feel like yeah um going back to what you said like he's not the only one but i feel like maybe they're using a scapegoat and maybe it's yeah. just and it's a very it's a very it's a very easy target a, yeah that's because he puts yeah. himself actually out there. there like that so he's okay. i think it's a very easy target but then i wish you I, I, I honestly don't think it is fair that he she should be arrested. Yes, I because think so too. It, I think uh, sometime in January there was this event that it, a certain traditional ruler was caught, and instead of EFCC and whatnot to arrest him, they were appealing to him. They said, "Please stop spraying money like this." <laughs> so, are you trying to tell me that some citizens are bigger uh, than mm -hmm. the other? Some mm -hmm. animals, remember That's Animal Farm. Yeah. Some animals are, are higher bigger, the are higher, bigger than the other. So. Yeah. Anyway. What's good for the geese is good for the gander. <laughs> right. I mean, God help us in this Nigeria anyway. All right. So a gig economy is a labor market that relies heavily on temporary and part-time 
positions filled by independent contractors and freelancers rather than full-time permanent employees. The widespread usage of smartphones and the internet have connected online users throughout nations via digital platforms. This makes it easier for businesses to connect with distant online workers on digital platforms and communicate their talent needs. This trend makes the gig economy more relevant and prominent in today's digital era. The adoption of technology creates a significant change in the gig economy, significantly by providing clients with access to talent from both developed and developing countries. In a similar vein, Digital platforms enable millions of independent contractors from developing countries to apply for jobs listed on these online boards. However, prolification of fake profiles on gig platforms clutters the market. For example, a basic administrative job to be placed on a freelance website and attract hundreds of applicants, so choosing the right talent for the project becomes quite difficult for the customer. So today we are discussing the gig economy whilst we look at the opportunities and challenges for freelancers in Nigeria. Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. I'll take that again, 081-8038-4663. Now, so, all right, so we'll just go on a very quick break and when we come back, we'll dive right into the conversation. Please stay with us. As much as I'm trying to like build my body and um, tone up my body, I'm also very conscious and very particular about my fitness, like even mentally, mm -hmm. because that's what even drove me to the gym in the first place. I needed to be fit mentally. I felt like my brain was too idle. I mean, not like I don't do any other work. Of course mm -hmm. I do, but then mm -hmm. I just felt like my brain was too idle. There was nothing to like push and push and push. I needed that extra push mm -hmm. from my brain to my body, mm -hmm. right? And it has been really, really working. So. I feel more alive now mm. than I used to feel. Mm -hmm. I, sometimes I just felt really heavy. I felt like, was I eating too much or was I eating mm. at night so late or something? Mm -hmm. But I feel a lot. The things I couldn't do before, I can do them now. Mm. I can climb like so many stairs mm -hmm. and not be panting like something else, you yeah. know. I, I just feel really fit. I feel really good. Mm -hmm. I feel very good about my body and myself yeah. generally. Yeah. So I think it's working.
Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching Ways. Um, so if you're just joining us, we are discussing the gig economy, the challenges and the opportunities. So joining us today is Elizabeth Musa, and she is a broadcast journalist who has extensive working experience managing radio and television projects. She has a Bachelor's of Arts degree in International Studies and Diplomacy from the University of Benin, a postgraduate diploma in Mass Communication from the University of Lagos, and a certificate degree from the School of Media and Communications, Pan Atlantic University. She served as a television producer and presenter for nearly five years, producing Breakfast Central, the first Pan Africa variety morning show, which focuses on topical issues from across the African continent. Currently, she is the video content lead at Business Day Media. Hi, Elizabeth. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. It's yes, <laughs> so, so good beautiful. to be here. Thank you so right. much. You How too. have you been? I've been very well. Thank you. All right, so diving right into the conversation on um, the gig economy, right? Um, like we said before you came in, for me personally, I, I really love the gig economy, right? Mm -hmm. Because I get to choose what you want to do. I want to do, yeah. when I want to do it, mm -hmm. and even where I want to do it. I don't necessarily have to be in the office like the traditional way, mm -hmm. be in the office from 9 to 5 and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And then I can work within a, a particular period of time, you know, maybe six months, for instance. So I know that in the next six months, I'm planning something else. So it gives me that flexibility, you know, I can put my time into very good use. And so what do you have to say concerning the gig economy? First of all, I think that the gig economy is the future. Mm. It's completely the future. The fact that you have all of that time, I'll say all of that time, yeah. to pick what you want to do and go for it and do it at your own time, yeah. so to speak, you know, and doing it from anywhere, that's just like a killer for me. Mm -hmm. So I think the gig economy is the future for any young person, especially now that the game has changed. We have artificial intelligence, we have people are talking about virtual reality for things, you're talking about um, there's a whole lot there's a whole lot now, technology so with the advent of technology everyone should actually be looking to be a part of the gig economy because yeah. there's no other way Yeah, I agree with you because it even um, improves um, it avails the opportunity to have multiple streams of income. Of course. Like when you're doing a regular mm -hmm. 9 to 5 job, mm -hmm. you have to like just be there and do only that. You don't have the liberty to like, you know, channel your creativity or your even your ideas into other areas basically. Mm -hmm. But when you're in this gig economy, I can take up like three jobs and right. they can run concurrently, you know, mm -hmm. without anyone. And, and that's and that's and for me, I think that that's what we have that is different from what our parents had. Yeah. Because I was speaking to one of my mentors the other day, and I was like, "You guys now do like a lot of things, and mm -hmm. you're you say you're working from home and you're working on this thing. You have this job. Yeah. You're telling me that you're saying you're brand manager for this thing. You're like, how are you guys doing all of this? And I'm like, you guys t called us the lazy generation, but like we're actually doing a lot of work. Like when you see me at home, mm -hmm. I'm doing a lot, getting a lot of work done. So. For young people now, especially the kind of life that we want, we have to work hard now. Because <laughs> the kind of isn't, that, isn't that the beautiful thing? They often yes. say that if you want a, a task done the easier way, give mm -hmm. it to a lazy, lazy person. person. Yes. Yes. They'll find yes. a way. Find yes. Yes. Easy They'll find an easy way to get it done. So I'm proud to be among the lazy generation of because course. that means that we have technology to help us. We have yeah. AI mm -hmm. and what, uh, mm -hmm. whatnot. So I'm, I'm sort of curious, for the average person who doesn't exactly understand this gig economy, what are some of these jobs that fall into that gig uh, category? So basically freelancers, um, there, there are lots of um, jobs that you can do as a gig. You, know, you could be a, a graphic designer, okay. you could be a voiceover artist, mm -hmm. you could be um, you could be a copywriter, you could be a content writer, you could be a content marketer. You, there's a lot of things to do. Yeah in the economy there's a whole lot you could be just a writer you could mm -hmm. be you could be writing speeches for people yeah and Literally there's a lot everything. of money there's a lot of money in that like you'll be writing speeches for people you, 
even pitch projects. So I have a friend who exactly. pitches, you know, you pitch so there's projects lots. to organizations. Yeah, yeah because people, people are looking for easy way out these days. So if I can pay for it, why mm -hmm. not? So if there's a market for it, because the truth is there's a market for a lot of things. I think that yeah. we've not tapped into a lot of freelancing markets, if yes. you ask me. Because, for instance, if I was going to deliver a speech somewhere, I probably have other things to do. I don't have the time to sit down and be writing it. So I would Thank gladly you. pay a freelancer. To get yes, that, to do so. that. Yes. And I, there are I people, and person. I know a girl that literally cashes out because she's a phone um, content creator. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so that's like what she does for, that's, that's her work. Right. So, and she, like, shit, her life has changed. Like, I look at the house the other day, I'm like, uh-uh, <laughs> girl, <laughs> you're born, so you know. Well. <laughs> because we just call and say, oh, yeah, the way, uh, um, I need you to help me do so, so thing. X, Y, Z, just, just chopped money like that. Mm -hmm. She just goes, creates content for them with her phone. But well, she does it very well. Yeah. Do you get like people don't even want my friends call me now and say, Oh, I please I need phone content creator. Like I don't want I don't want cameraman you know, that to bring camera, like I need someone that knows how to use their phone. Mm -hmm. She calls herself a real maker, a real Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, RA, yeah, 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 Glory, do, do you have some yeah, questions so, for um I um saw um or I I saw a report which says that um the gig economy or the gig um, industry contributes about 3.9 billion dollars globally or it's worth that mm -hmm. so where do you see nigeria because when i was looking at the top ranking countries in that list i did not see nigeria so do you think like there's an opportunity for us to get to that point where when um, we're talking about africa i know currently now nigeria definitely will come up when we're talking about africa but in a global scale do you think like we'll get to that point where um when we're talking about countries topping the rank in terms of these freelancing opportunities nigeria will be mentioned first of all i think that for nigeria there's a brain drain you know yeah. lots of our best talents are going out so probably that's why you're not seeing nigeria because the best people that are doing all of these things are probably out of the going country out. but i do think that for those of us that are here lots of people need to upskill we complain of having no jobs we complain of you know um being underemployed that is your the job you're doing is not paying you as much but there's a lot of opportunities to actually do so much more if people actually take on so much and learn you know just keep adding value to themselves there's a whole lot so if many young people are doing all of these things upskilling um learning new Learning new trade, should I put it, yeah. should I call it trade? Yeah. If lots more young people are doing this thing, probably Nigeria will actually be on that list. So I, I personally, um, Chris, or I'm coming to you. <laughs> so I personally, um, I, I create content and I know there are other platforms like the user generated content. I think maybe um, you've highlighted on that. Um, my, the, 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 what do I say? My concern with this is like, for example, you give a proper business, there is a growth strategy. There is opportunity to like expand to other countries and everything. But I currently, I mean, educate me if I'm wrong. I currently do not see that growth part when it comes to freelance. I feel like it's, it's, so, um, it's so independently based that, that it's not easy to see that growth side of it when it comes, when you're looking at it as a proper business. Or do you think there's a way to upscale? Like if someone in this industry wanting to um, go into other countries, want to have branches, how do you think people can manage that? Is this going to be something which you're doing it alone for the rest of your life and you just be happy since you're making money, you can pay your bills and maybe do some trips and all of that? I'm, I'm very ambitious. So if I'm doing something, I want to extend. I want to go to other countries. Yeah. I want to do things. So where is that growth part when it comes to freelancing? I, I don't know if you're asking me of the pros and the cons or yeah i'm not quite i'm not quite clear on the question so I, i'm i'm talking about is there a growth part um when you're in this line of business because mm -hmm. i see it as a business yes is there a growth path um path for expansion mm -hmm. like if you really want to expand mm -hmm. is there an opportunity to have that growth path certainly it's you have to take the business as your business like mm -hmm. okay this is something i'm like so there are some freelancers that just look at it like, oh, I'm just doing this thing. Like, you have to look at it like a business and create something. So I don't know if I'm allowed to mention, like, comp am I allowed to? I should probably. <laughs> no. So I have, there's, there's a part of certain company that if you're a freelancer and you're talking about this growth part and yeah. all of that, like, you don't know how to. 
that's what they help to do. Do you understand? They help mm. you to make it a, an enterprise. Mm. Do you understand? So you're no longer a person. Like, I'm, I'm not just, oh, they just called Lizzie, oh, yeah, do this thing. Like, it's an enterprise that now has... Yeah. has potential for having a growth part. Like, people are looking at it as a business. You're now mm -hmm. a full entity as a business, as an enterprise. So they do that, like, for people that are like, oh, I don't know, like, I don't know how to structure this thing. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I don't, like, I don't understand my finances. I don't know this thing. That's what they do. So that's for people that, and I'll, I'll always encourage people that don't know how to, like, structure their work, mm -hmm. right, to go to people like that. Like, they would help you make your work and uh, you, it's now an enterprise. Do you, do you get what I mean? So people like that need people like that. Do you understand? Yeah. So that's also another opportunity those ones have created for themselves because mm -hmm. they realize that, oh, there's this gap. People yeah. think, oh, I don't know how to structure. I don't know yeah. the growth part. I don't know this. Thing. So they've created that now. Okay. because I, And I don't know what I'll even call They call themselves freelance service provider. Do you understand? <laughs> service provider for freelancers. Do you understand? So... People are just creating jobs. People are noticing gaps, and they are mm -hmm. creating jobs. So that also mm -hmm. brings us back to job creation. When you people are upskilling, mm -hmm. there are lots of gaps everywhere that people can fill. All right. So we will go on a very quick okay. break right now. I know Sandy has a lot of <laughs> questions. <laughs> All right. So uh, right, definitely. So when we come back from this break, we'll continue our conversation. Please stay with us. is rooted mm. in abject poverty absolutely ethnicity religious yeah. bigotry and all of that so until we address all of that we must understand these root causes and find a lasting solution to poverty poverty i mean talking solutions it's not about giving stipends of five thousand naira for as empowerment it's not going to solve anything mm -hmm. because five thousand naira is going to finish and then tomorrow they come back, they're back on the street. Yeah. If a policeman lives in the environs of where he's policing, these people are not strangers, they're your neighbors. Yeah. And then it, it drives home the point that one day it could be your child. Of course. Welcome back. And if you're just joining us, we are discussing the gig economy opportunities and challenges for freelancers. Let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 80 384663. Once again, 081 384663. Our phone lines are now open. Please call us on 08072500779. Four, nine. Once again, 0702500 Now, Sandy, you had a lot of questions to ask yes, before I we do. went on the break, so I, please I go I do ahead. have a lot of questions, absolutely, okay. because I have done this gig thing before it became a thing. Right wow. from, from university <laughs> or so, I did everything, name it. I was a commercial model, I was a runway model, right. I, was, I was on TV, okay, I was now. on radio, yes, I, was just acting, just I was acting. <laughs> what else was I doing? <laughs> I was in voiceover. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I did I did literally everything or almost everything but within the 
within the same uh, entertainment field or just field of creatives. And I was constantly getting worn out because, yes, I was multi I am multi talented, I do a lot of things, but I noticed that because you're freelance, because your contract, uh, mm -hmm. they contract you to do a job for a season and then you're, they don't really have as much value or respect or reward for labor for you as mm -hmm. they would a full time staff. Yeah. So, what would happen is, as much as you feel like you're in control of your time, you end up doing just too much. And given how Lagos is, mm -hmm. I mean, other people might have it easy. Somebody who is who works in the gig economy in Abuja might have it easier because you don't really have a lot of traffic mm -hmm. to contend with. But here in Lagos, I was constantly getting worked up because by the time you're moving from this casting to going for this voiceover mm -hmm. to meeting up with this call time, mm -hmm. it was just a lot. And I wasn't getting the value for it, like the financial value. Yeah, okay. Which brings me to my question. Does... Uh, um, um, Gig economy, yes, it gives you that time for yourself, but is it really, really rewarding financially? Because I'll, I, I kid you not, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm going to be very open on TV. Yeah. At that point, I was getting paid 30,000 naira for voiceover. Mm -hmm. wow. And I would see other people that are getting paid 600k, 700k. And I look at myself and I'm like, what is wrong with my body? Where am I going wrong? <laughs> what did I do wrong? <laughs> you know, so yeah, is it really financially rewarding? <laughs> <laughs> it's Let's like, just get real. It's like it's like every every job somehow mm -hmm. has their challenge. Like not just in the gig economy, there are people that are doing certain things, and other people doing that same thing, yeah. mm -hmm. and are earning more than. Ah, life is not you realize, bad. right? <laughs> life is not balanced. Yeah. So it's about just knowing how to do your. I don't like. I, I'm just yeah. I'm thinking. I'm like. Uh, what will I say? That I think that it's about value. I think maybe those correct. people that are mm. so, enjoying 600,000 are probably have developed themselves in such a way that people place more value on their services. Mm. So it's, 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 it's and and Just, that's, also, that's the thing about being able to create a brand for mm -hmm. oneself yeah. because mm -hmm. I think that's it. Yeah. So that's just this it, about being able to create a brand because there are people that will go and do certain things that you can do too. But they want those people. Why? Yeah. Maybe they they've created a particular brand mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they are reaching out to them and they're giving all of these stems that you can open your mouth yeah. and like where is this one coming from? Like from where to where? Yeah. Do you get so it's mm -hmm. really about that. It's really about the kind of brand that you've created. It's just what it is. People will just be like, okay, you know what? Oh, this person is saying this amount, this person is saying this amount. They're looking at it like, mm -hmm. like and yeah. they can price that other person down, no. But that person that called, okay, so I had a friend, they reached out to me one time, she's my friend, so like all of these people, they're like, oh, so, 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 so thing. And these people that told me, oh, they don't, that, like my friend who is the brand manager had mentioned to me that, oh, they don't, we're working with this type of budget, so they were like, mm. oh, how much can this my friend do this thing? And mm. the thing with me is, I respect all of my friends, do you understand? Even if I know, like, mm. how much they want to chat, I'll ask the person again, like, what are you looking at for this mm. thing, so I can inform this person. And then I told them that, oh, she said so, so thing. They were like, are you serious? Now, wow. So the guy was like, okay, please, can she just send us, like, an invoice, send us, uh, like, a bio and everything? And I'm like, look, oh, this is someone that told me this is what they're just looking at, that yeah. they don't want anything, but because of this case, person, yeah. when I said mm. to her, it's like, mm, are you serious? That, that's what he said to me, like, very chat. I was like, okay, I should. And she got that thing. Do you get? I could have said, oh, um, when they asked for that thing, I'm like, okay, they're just other people. And then they, and they're like, ah, we go do. They would even mm -hmm. tell me lesser. Yeah. Do you understand? But it's just the kind of brand that people tend to create for themselves. Yeah, yeah I, I think I, think agree, I, I agree that, to that. that, that yeah, and to for that, sorry, sorry, Sans, sorry. But for that, add to that, I think that positioning also also matters a lot because you could be the best brand, you could be the best person, but you're not positioned in the right circle. Right. You're not in the right places. Yeah. You're not yeah. you're not visible enough for no. the people that actually need your service mm -hmm. and. Will put value on you to actually mm -hmm. locate you. So I think position is also... Yeah, yeah I mean, looking back, I see that was... Uh, the moment she said branding, it just hit me like mm -hmm. that was definitely yeah. the problem. And mm -hmm. I know, like, a lot of people are going through that. A lot of mm -hmm. freelancers yeah. are going through that as well because I was straight off of school, coming to Lagos, I was just desperate to get anything that would put money in my pocket. Exactly. So there was, there was desperation. People always notice that desperation. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's like an it's aura. Like they want to now, it's like they now milk want to it. milk yes, it. They yes, want to take advantage yes. of yeah. that because they feel like, ah, I know we're going to say right. we are hungry, so better take this thing. <laughs> you know? Because yeah. eventually I stepped off the scene and I had like an aerial view of everything mm. I was doing wrong. 
Mm. And now coming back, I I I I, I, I started working, him. taking my brand more seriously. Yes. yes, I became more mm. intentional. And then something happened. Uh, a friend of mine called me up and said, "Oh, this person is doing wants somebody for this gig. This is how much they're offering." And I said no. And when I said that no, something was like, "Ah, but it's shy, extra. Just carry down fifty and fifty-seven pockets. It's extra change." But something in me was like, "Ah, you've gone beyond this now. What is that?" And initially, that no it did sting mm -hmm. but i got over that one and then it became so easy for me to say See, no uh, i'm mm -hmm. like i'm a freelance person but no yeah, my time is still important yeah. i would rather be yeah. sleeping yes. than do this and on the oh, so charge the pain, myself yeah. yes mm -hmm. yeah. so i think uh for freelancers not being desperate is, because is there's, major, there's something like key. taking it on a job and then you're doing it it's something you like to do something you know how to do well but you're doing it and you're feeling cheated that's mm. like the worst feeling That's ever worst feeling, because actually. they did not force you do you understand mm -hmm. so saying no is like a, it's a it's powerful when you're able mm -hmm. to say no mm -hmm. it's hard because at that time you might be needing money but the truth is they look at you differently even if at that moment they're like oh, this, this. Mm, yeah. but they look at you differently they know that okay i know that i know that what i'm going to bring to sandy has to i have to come correct yeah. at that moment it might pain you but at the, for the long run, yeah. it's always a better thing. Okay, thank you, Elizabeth. Um, oftentimes, in the Nigerian scene, when there's, there's, there's this very big challenge with freelancers in the Nigerian scene, where Nigerian creatives want to apply for um, remote jobs abroad, mm -hmm. for international remote jobs, but they get declined because they are Nigerians, mm -hmm. right? It's a very big challenge because we have the best guys here trying to get something good in the international space, but once they get to the part of nationality and they find that you're Nigerians, and that's no thanks to, I mean, some of our brothers and sisters that have just made this thing really difficult for us. <laughs> <laughs> I not say it too much. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, it's, it's really a big challenge. So how do you think that um, creatives or freelancers in this case can actually maneuver that entire problem? So I would say that the only way that we can, will I say maneuver or create a better image for ourselves is for the people that are doing different things, people, w whatever field they're finding themselves in the freelance gig economy mm -hmm. is to make sure that they imbibe the highest form of excellence mm. because that will always peak Right. before any other thing yeah. so when i know that the 10 people that i've dealt with from nigeria ah, i know the way do you get it gradually changes the narrative and that's mm. why like in our circles we have to be those kind of people like in this place people know that oh 20 20 people can say this about you this it just goes like that because it's not it can't we can't say oh like are they going to change that narrative but when all the people that are doing different works um in the gig economy and making sure that they stand for honesty, they do their work mm. well, strong work ethic, all of those things. I think it will always just be the standout thing for us. All right. So how do you navigate the issue of um, inconsistent income? Because the truth is that as a freelancer, you really don't know what's coming. Mm -hmm. You can only try to apply here, apply there. But if you apply and then... in the space of two months you don't get any job done it means you don't have any income yeah so and if god is really on your side you get a job even after the two months but if it's reverse is the case you are staying six months mm -hmm. <laughs> without an actual job so it means that there's no income so i mean it then creates this um inconsistent income so how do freelancers how do you think freelancers can navigate mm. this um space uh, firstly if you speak to some of the biggest for instance, YouTubers mm -hmm. that are big and are earning millions every day, they'll always tell you that you should still have like a fallback steady yeah. sort of income. That's like the for biggest, beginner stage. Yes. Not, okay. not, not just for beginner. For every stage, oh, okay. they will always tell you that. I was speaking to K um, Kagan the other day. It was like some of the things that made him, like he's so big, like he's literally so big. Mm. But he was saying that the thing that helped him from the beginning is knowing that like, have this thing because it's going to be lots of work but you have to know that oh i have this steady like there's this work that i do mm -hmm. that is there but what the mistake that many people make yeah i know it's freelance just like mm -hmm. okay like oh, wait, i'm a freelance i'm doing all of this thing i'm just waiting for the next one even though you do like 10 in a day no that's not it it's still good if you still have like this steady thing mm -hmm. that pays you that helps because you never know when your 
next paycheck is coming. You never know yes. where it's coming from. But if you just have this, it just, and that's part of it. It also helps you to do the highest standard of work. Mm. Do you understand? When you know that, oh, you have this thing. So you see, you see sometimes video editors, they, they have like this bad reputation sometimes. Like, late is video yes, late no. is <laughs> Because they're just taking, so, but do you know that the ones that have like a steady job, the normal them. one, the normal one, so. <laughs> <laughs> if you, when they're taking on jobs now, the one, that's I said, the normal ones, it's like, mm. oh, I'm taking these three. And I know that I can deliver within X, Y, Z time. time. Yeah. Right? Because they know that, oh, they have this. And they're going to do it well. But those ones, that's like, oh, they, ah, this one, that yes, everything is coming me. now. Oh, yeah. They call me. Yes, 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 I'm available. Tell yes, us. yes, yes, I'm available. Tell us. Tell us. Tell us. <laughs> do you understand? <laughs> so, but you have to have a steady, in anything, you, when you're in gig economy, you have to have a steady, if you like, if you like we're saying, yeah, we're saying it now, that feel like, it's feel like, have, have a steady yeah, source of income because it also helps the delivery of your work. You are able to give it your best. Yeah, you know that oh, I'm enjoying doing this, but you know that you have to, you are not getting desperate. You're not calling ridiculous rates because you're like, yeah. oh, yeah, this one that they've got. Yeah, you're yeah, not calling yeah, so and you're not taking too much because you think that oh, ah, this one that is coming now. Let me not say no because I don't know when the next thing. So yeah, yeah. that's it. So just have a steady source of income. And I think I would also, if I may add to what you have just said, is financial discipline. Mm. Yes. Yeah, we, we should learn to save as freelancers because um, everybody will not always have that luxury mm -hmm. of having something to mm -hmm. uh, uh, fall back on. So that moment when you do that gig and they pay you 800K mm -hmm. Or five million, or however the price they get. Don't, don't. Very disciplined. That is so true. If you're not disciplined, so uh, all of these <laughs> issues will be having them. Because if you're not disciplined, how will you save? Do you get? That's true. How will yeah. you be able to juggle different things? How will you know that? Oh yes, they're not watching. They're not on your neck to do this thing. And I'm not like, oh, I want to just go and be eating and watching TV when I have things to do. You have to be a very disciplined person. Um, we have renowned platforms like Fiverr. And mm -hmm. So in Nigeria, do you know some platforms where freelancers can sign up to? Or maybe we don't have that yet. So like, what's, what advice would you give with respect to that? The only one, I know one, that's full gap. Okay. Right, that's, that's about the one that I know. So it means like we need to still push ourselves like in this space to get to that point where we have very well renowned um, platforms where freelancers can sign up to absolutely you know. yeah. absolutely all right thank you it's been a really lovely conversation and we're so glad to have you on the show elizabeth I'm so happy really i enjoyed fun. this I conversation enjoyed yes, I, did. <laughs> I also did enjoy I the conversation it. all right Gloria, i think you have a whatsapp message can we go over that yes um one minute all right so on this conversation today, we've touched on what the gig economy really is, right? We've talked on um, the opportunities for freelancers. We've even talked on some challenges faced by them, um, specifically also in Nigeria, right? And we've also talked about some strategies for success. Although we'd like to have you back on this show, Elizabeth, I'll because it feels it. like we have a lot of things I'll to talk about. I would love to be here again. <laughs> Okay, so right. the yes, gig, gig economy is the future. Yes. So the message we have from our regular fan, Daniel Ilo, he said, Good evening, my beautiful sisters of what are you saying? The gig economy, opportunities and challenges for, free for freelancers. Your beautiful guest made mention of artificial intelligence. She also said that the people get, she also said that, People get involved in so many things and get extra busy in what they do. She also said that gaps need to be filled. My dear beautiful sister Sandra said that she's a freelancer and that the financial benefit is very vital con concerning what people do so that so that will be a personal survival. So that will be personal survival. Your guest added that to be a freelancer, you need to bring out excellence in what you do, which I agree. My beautiful sister, Dami, nice anchoring of the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Daniel. Record, by the way. God bless you. Thank you very much, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you very much, Daniel. You must give us a summary of like, the yes. Yes. <laughs> give us a summary of the entire show. Show. Thanks Thanks following. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's our regular um, fan. So thank you very much, Daniel. Now, so before we go, do ensure you follow us on Instagram at Wayshow Africa and on Great Team, an official of Great TV. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our social media engagements. And remember to like, share, comment, and invite your family and friends to watch us and follow us. Now, if you missed today's quote, here it is again. 
solopreneurs will rise because freelancers will become commodities to utilize. And this was said by Richie Nauten. I'll see you on Monday at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Bye. -bye.